Today is all about Christmas in July and I'm showing you how you can turn wood signs from the Dollar Tree into really pretty distressed wood packages to display on your porch or next to your fireplace. Let's get started. I've really been trying to craft from my stash lately, so I guess it's good that I've become quite the Dollar Tree wood sign hoarder. I wanted to have three different packages in graduating sizes, so I started with two of the tall signs from the Dollar Tree. Coincidentally, one was even an elf sign from last Christmas, but they have these year round, so you shouldn't have a problem finding them. I had my husband trim off about six inches from those, so when the two were placed side by side, the resulting package ended up being about 17 inches high by 12 inches wide then I used a little Easter sign from Dollar Tree which is about 13 by 9 and a half and finally I had two leftover boards from a love sign which I had my husband trim about three inches off of those so they ended up being about 10 inches by eight and a half inches Next, I gave them a quick coat of white chalk paint by Waverly, which is a really affordable brand from Walmart. The Dollar Tree boards absorb paint really well, so it really only took one coat for good coverage. Also, I didn't really care if there were a few areas that shone through. You'll see later that I end up distressing the packages anyway. While I'm painting, I'll mention that today's challenge is hosted by Sonia from Domestic Diva DIY and Sandra from The Schwoven's Nest. I'll put links to both of their channels in the description box below as well as the link for the playlist, so be sure to check out their channels and then hop to the playlist to see what everyone comes up with. Next I'm using large craft sticks that I got from Walmart to attach the boards to each other. Wood glue is best to use but it takes a while to dry and I'm impatient so I used a mixture of wood glue and hot glue. The hot glue gives it a quick hold so I can continue with my project while the wood glue will absorb into the wood over time and provide a long lasting hold. Next I wanted to give my packages a distressed look so I grabbed my black wax and a baby wipe to apply it. The baby wipe applies the wax a little bit thinner and allows you to blend it a little more. I just dabbed the wipe in the wax and then brushed it lightly onto the boards in a back and forth motion in the same direction so that it almost looks like it was sanded and the wood is showing through. For the edges, I wanted the black to be more stark, so I grabbed a dry white cloth, which is actually just a sleeve cut off of one of my husband's old t-shirts, and I applied the wax with that. This makes it less smearable, but I was okay with that because I wanted it to be more distressed around the edges. Last Christmas, I made a wood block Christmas package ornament, and for that, I actually painted it black first and then white on top and distressed it with sandpaper to reveal the black around the edges. I'll link that above if you wish to check it out. I think I did 10 different ornaments in that video, all from Dollar Tree products, so it could provide some really good Christmas inspiration. But I will say that this black wax is a great cheat to achieve the same look if you want to bypass the mess of sanding. Next, it was time to transform the boards into Christmas packages with ribbon and embellishments. I got this huge roll of buffalo plaid wired ribbon from Michaels after Christmas last year for 80% off, so I've been waiting a while to break it out. I love shopping after big holidays or at the end of a season to find high-end craft supplies within my thrift store budget. I didn't want to waste any ribbon by actually tying it around the whole board, so I just glued a strip vertically around the board and then glued two longer strands around the back on either side so that I could tie them horizontally. I always liked getting the ribbon that has wire in it. That way I don't have to have any fancy bow making skills. I just tie it like a shoelace and then fluff it out so it looks nice. Then I like to twist the tails and the wire helps them hold the twist. My mother used to even roll them around a pencil to make them extra twirly, but I like more of a gentle twist. Also, don't forget to dovetail the ends. Here you see me trying out some different embellishments. I had some evergreen sprigs, some pine cones, and some red berries that I was kind of testing out to see what looked best. I ended up deciding that I liked four evergreen sprigs and two little red berry sprigs on each package, and I used hot glue to attach them. 
The berries are from Dollar Tree floral picks and I think these are still evergreen sprigs left over from one of my thrift flips last year. I had gotten a pitiful looking little tabletop tree from the thrift store and decided that it was too far gone to use as an actual tree. So I just clipped off the branches and had about 60 little sprigs to use for different projects, all for just $2. It's a good example of how it's important to think outside the box when you're thrifting. These packages actually remind me of an actual package I wrapped for my mother last Christmas. We knew it was likely to be her last Christmas with us, so I made an extra special present. She absolutely loved wrapping packages and never used gift bags or store-bought sticker bows. We would always go to Joanne Fabrics the day after Christmas to score the really pretty wired ribbon on extreme discounts and save it for the following year. We'd get together and have little wrapping parties and wrap while we listened to music and we would compete for the prettiest package. It's the quality time moments like that that I will miss the most. And here they are displayed on my front porch. I just love how these turned out and I had to dip into some of my Christmas decorations to find some of the supplies for this project and I found a few things that I'd forgotten about so I'm definitely inspired for more holiday DIYs. Thanks for joining me today. If you found me from the Christmas in July challenge playlist, I would love for you to stick around and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you can stay up to date with my content. I'm taking a little two-night getaway with my husband this week, but I'll be back next week with more budget DIYs. And I hope to see you there. See you next time. Bye.